The AK was Citroen's charismatic commercial cousin to the Citroen 2CV people's car that we all know and love. It transported goods that weren't too heavy all across cities, towns and villages, but not too far, of course, to all those places that we love. And it did it in that utilitarian, commercial, simple charm that today we kind of crave, I think. But what about, what about if I told you that today you could buy a brand new version of the AK and if you wanted to, you could have it completely electric in the case of this particular car. Well, this is it. This is the Eve. And this is the source of the review on today's show. I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to The Late Break Show. And this episode is proudly supported by blackcircles.com, Britain's largest online tyre retailer. Now, before we start playing with this retro EV van, you're probably looking at that thinking it looks a little bit familiar. Well, that's because in a previous episode on The Late Break Show a couple of years ago, I reviewed this car, which is the electric cousin to that. Oh, if you haven't watched this, there's a link above my head now. I promise there is. You can watch this. Bonjour, Darren, as they say in Wiltshire. Bonjour, my babby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is your creation, this thing, Darren. It is. And what's, what fascinates me is, um, tell, I want to tell the audience wh how new it is. This is pretty much all new, right? Most things you can see is brand new. Right. Um, the only things on, on these windows. Oh, are, really? Yeah. Everything else you can see is brand new. Wow. Okay. The so suspension arms, uh, wheels, tires, lights, Chassis, everything. shell. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. So we'll start at the front end and we'll flip it around to talk about the back end. So the front end of the Eve, this body shell yep. is a new body shell. It's a brand new 2CV body shell, which we cut down the B post yep. to mount on the van back. The van back. So, so you, you've been able to buy new shells for a while, I know, with the passenger cars. Yep. Um, and we'll go through the slight differences in a minute when you sit in there. So from here forward, we've got the, we've got the, the, the motor, the brushless motor with the original gearbox. Yes. Yeah. Um, disc brakes because they. Yeah. And and um, things like lights. This is like a optional LEDs or is this halogen we, lights? We this is just normal halogen lights. We will be offering LEDs eventually. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this was yeah. It's like this is just a, a prototype test mule. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's just a standard. This bit forward, apart from this roof, is a electric two CV. Is it? Yeah. It's great. It does look so nice, doesn't it? With the three bolt, the three bolt, because these are brand new wheels, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they are. These are brand new, are still made in France wheels. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're the original, made it, they're the original Citroen wheels, yeah. Citroen 2CVs always had comically thin tires. 125s is standard, or like this, this has 135 15s for a little bit of extra width but regardless of whether you've got an older car or a new car electric or piston when it comes to needing new tires head to blackcircles.com head to the black circles website enter your vehicle registration number and your postcode and then you'll find the most suitable tires for your car and your budget there are thousands of reviews of different tires from real customers to help you choose the best tires for your car and with the Black Circle's click and fit service, with over 2,000 tyre fitting partners, there will be a garage or a mobile tyre fitter conveniently located near you. Chassis. New chassis, galvanised. Brand right? new chassis. Yep. yep. Uh, this one is not galvanised on this one, but they, they do come galvanised, yes. Yep, OK. Um, it's, the black ones are 10-year uh, warranty. The galvanised ones are guaranteed for life, and that's okay. the ones we recommend to go for. 
If you're watching this as someone that's not familiar with two CVs, you're thinking a new chassis. Actually putting a new chassis under a two CV is, seems to be a relatively common job because yeah, they yeah. do rot. Well, the car in the day was made, it was a very, very cheap car yeah. and made to a price. And also the latter years was made in Portugal, yeah. so there's no rust protection. Right. So, or very little. Of yeah. course, you bring them to the UK, they don't last. There are stories of the sh um, chassis rotting away before there was out of a two year warranty. Really? Three year warranty, yeah. Because there was um, just no protection at all? No. Gosh. Right. The okay. early ones are different, but the later ones were built in Portugal. But most of them now have been replaced. Yeah. And this chassis is a made in a license from Citroen. Okay. So it's a Citroen part. It's cool. made by my part supplier, Mahari Club Cassis, in the south of France. Wow. Talk to me about the sort of the size of the battery pack, the size of the motor, <clears throat> the proposed range. Yeah. The motor is the same as electric 2C EV. Um, it's a 15 kilowatt motor. The on the van, because the battery pack is mounted centrally, we can offer two sizes. Oh, yeah, 10 kilowatt hour or 20. Yeah. Um, this is a 10. Um, this will do, we tell people about 60 to 65 miles. In central London, it would do over 75 miles, what I've actually done. You've done but, it? Yes. But what people don't realise, it took me a day and a half to do 75 miles in London. <laughs> right. Because the traffic. Of course. Yeah. Well, then city range in EVs is, is, is often way, way higher because yeah. of all that start stop and it's got regen braking, of course. So, yes, it, it's, it's very mild. It's not like a, a modern electric car, but yes, it has got re, regen braking. Yeah. Um, the, the bigger battery pack, 20 kilowatt hour, we were, were hoping about 125, 130 mile range. Okay. But what the van is designed to do, most people will only need the 10 kilowatt hour. You, and that was almost my next question. What is the sort of proposed audience for this? In my head, I'm thinking kind of up-end, high-end boutique shop Yeah, people. it's artisan businesses who um, want to stand out. Because, you know, if you make a... Everywhere you go in this, people... We did a bit of a photo shoot in London when I was doing the uh, test drive, and I was in a car behind. And when you're driving it, you don't realise how many people are stopping to look at you. Yeah. And, like... Or not look, look at the van yeah. because it it stands out. Yeah. And if you want something what stands out from the norm, there's not much on the market. Yeah. To do so that. You're you're, pay, you're you're paying a premium for the fact that it is a, a brand new retro. Yeah. And PR tool. And it's going to be made very small numbers, and also they're made to order. We don't make the vans, then sell them. Okay. People order a van, and we make it to their specification. How long does it take to, to build one, do you think? Uh, we're, we're looking about three months from start to finish. Okay. Yeah. And you do all of that stuff in-house? We do everything in-house. We've we got our own paint shop, so you can have any colour, um, nice. literally any colour. Um, the the EV kit we fit, yeah, it's all done in-house. We don't manufacture the chassis, but stuff like that, but that's bought in from our supplier. Yeah, yeah. So what does the EV feel like? Well, the first thing you've got to remember with this car, this the philosophy of it, is that the EV conversion is relative power to what the car originally had. So if you're expecting a really fast, you know, like street sleeper kind of approach with sort of Tesla levels of acceleration, this is not that car. So this feels like a sort of around about a 30 horsepower car. And as such, it isn't fast off the mark. You have still got a gearbox, like Darren said, so, typically you'll select third or fourth, one of the tallest gears, and then just pull away in that and leave it. Now, if you hear wind rustling by, it's a very hot day today, uh, it's worryingly for England, and um, we've got the air con, look. So if you see sunlight underneath the windscreen, it's because I've got the, the air conditioning flap open, which is just a giant knob that opens and closes. There's the knob down there. So I can adjust that, look. There you go, I can tweak it. But as I cruise through this village, it reminds me of how much I've missed being in a 2CV. It's so soft. <laughs> it's so soft. And these seats are so squidgy. It's a really comfortable place to be in, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm tall, I'm six foot three. Darren's not a small guy. We can both fit in it. I've got tons of leg room, it's a flat floor. So all the kind of practical parts of it. They kind of stack up. The indicator's louder than that guy's motorbike. 
because the indicator solenoid is actually in there. So the brakes are pretty good actually on this, um, but they're standard and that's because the, the weight is relatively close to standard 2CV and the performance is close to standard. So instead of upgrading so much stuff, they have actually upgraded the damping a little bit, but that's about it. Let's explore the corners. So I'm gonna drive flat out regardless of the corner. Let's see what happens. Let the 135s do the grip, do the work. It's almost one of those cars actually, you can drive it flat out and you don't come unstuck. But just remember the 2CV was designed to drive across a ploughed field with eggs on board and deliver a comfortable ride. But also it was such a cheap, simple car, which is why it's a masterclass in minimalism. And you forget that, you know, your dash cluster is, it consists of barely anything. A heater for the demister, um, windscreen wipers, fog light at the back, mandatory. Um, and there's your speedo with a sort of waving needle. And a mono spoke wheel, the mono spoke. So this is 40 miles an hour. I've got my gauge down here, which gives me the range. And as we said before, this is a sort of between 60 and 70 mile-ish range car. This is a small range car. So if you're looking at it going, hang on, it's a 40 grand van that's brand new, old school looking, which it can't travel very far and it can't be rapid charged. You can fully charge it in about two and a half hours on a three kilowatt supply. So like a three pin mains plug really. If that just sounds useless to you, then you won't even entertain this. But I think there's enough, this is a niche where there's enough brands, individuals, businesses, who would see the promotional value of it, or want to have an EV delivery van that delivers stuff that's fairly lightweight and premium perhaps, quirky. And those are the people that might see the potential in this, the EV or AK350, depending on what you're gonna call it. Don't call it a Citroen, because it's not an official Citroen. So we flip the car around, or van around, because I wanna talk about this. First of all, before we talk about the, the build of this, quick AK history lesson for people that don't know much about AKs, like me. I know yeah. there's, version, there's, three, there's been three versions yeah, there's, of AKs. Basically there's three versions. There's AK250, yeah. AK350, and AK400. The AK250 was based on the car chassis. Yeah. Um, same height as this van, but around about nine inches smaller. Wheelbase. Yeah, okay. the, the back of the van. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. right, yeah. Um, the AK350, what this is based on, yeah. is, is, a, is a longer van, a low roof. Right, okay. Um, the AK400 is the same length, but it's about six inches higher. So it's got the aerodynamic properties of a house brick. Okay, right, okay, <laughs> okay. So this is the 350. Yeah, it based, yeah, it's based on the 350. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the the this back is is not metal. No, it's not. No, so it's... the car shell is metal, and you you chop the car. Sh Basically, we chop it down the B post. Yeah. Weld a a a frame in. Yeah. So we can bolt the fiberglass. Yeah. Body to the to to the um, the, the the B post. So this is all fiberglass, which is kind of good because the original 2CV metal is extremely thin. And rustic quite badly in the UK. Yeah. So the one I did the intro next to, that lovely patinated van by your workshop, is that a 250? Yes, it is, yeah. That's a two, so that's an early, yeah. an early van. Brilliant. So we've got that out of the way because I was really interested to know about that. Weight, I want to know about the weight because van people will go, tell me the weight, tell me how much you can fit in it. Those are the things they want to know. The curb weight of the van is 650 kilograms. 650 kilograms. With the battery pack, this, because I weighed it the other day on the, on the Weybridge. Did you? Yep. So with the battery and everything, 600, 600 bloody hell. I, I got to admit, I thought it was going to be a bit more than that, but it's 650 kilograms. And that's the small battery pack, this yes, one? Yes, yes. Okay, right. So. Um, the payload, we're, we're, it's, it's about 380 kilograms it'll take. Right. Um, you know, I tested it when we done our uh, photo shoot in London. Yeah. Myself, I drove it and I had 200, just over 200 kilograms of 2CV gearboxes in the back because I had to pick them up yeah. and it was absolutely fine. 
really. Yeah. And I suppose it's never going to be a fast, long-range vehicle. No, it was never, never designed. It's, it's not de designed across a continent. Yeah. And it's not designed to take two ton of gravel. No. Um, like we said, it, it, this is based on the car chassis. Yeah. But all we have done is upgraded the real suspension. I was just about to do the official bounce test. Two CV bounce test because they are ridiculous. So, I mean, the space is really good. Totally flat um, threshold at the back. The, the battery pack lives behind the seats. Yeah. Um, did the original uh, vehicle have the same layout as this or did it have a bulkhead? Um, it had a bulkhead. We can put a bulkhead in. Um, the original van had inner wings. So when you look look at the other van, the yep. inner wing came all the way down because yes. you had the, the wheel arch. One side was a fuel tank. The other side was, was the spare wheel carrier. Okay, okay. Of course, so, you don't need the fuel tank. No. Um, but, so by taking those out, we have gained a lot of room. Yeah, yeah. So you've got some lash downs. Are these glass fibre? Yep. Okay, so the doors are glass fibre. Nice. Let's just show those. And... The windows are a neat shape, but are these, is this the original shape? Or? No, we, we're going to offer two, win, uh, three, three options. No windows. Yeah. The windows, what was period to the AK350, what was sort of this size. Sort of oblong yep. squares. Yeah. This is period to the very early vans. You get the very early ripple bonnet vans, very early 2CV van, that the sort of lodging shaped window. What really looks good. Not the most practical of windows to look out, <laughs> but they do look the part. So the French porthole, yeah, or yes. the or the oblong for more practicality. But again, so so I can't believe how light it is. Yeah, no, it, it's six hundred and fifty kilos. Honestly, yeah, I I couldn't believe it myself. Yeah, six hundred and fifty. Uh, how much are they? <laughs> the they, they are uh, forty thousand pound plus the VAT. Okay. Um, yeah, the for 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 the for the electric one. Yep. We, we can do a petrol one and they start at 33,000 plus fat. Okay, so if you're watching this and you're thinking, I like the idea of all this brand new 2CV van stuff, but I'm not interested in electric, you could order one with a normal piston, yeah. you know, flat twin. Yeah, 602cc, yeah. about 30 brake horsepower, yeah. Oh, stop it with your performance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's lots of hills around here and this is not the talkiest motor in the world. Um, or the highest voltage. So it does feel authentically kind of old school. This is not, you know, this is a an air-cooled brushless motor. This is not your kind of like Tesla motors or your really, really cutting edge stuff. But it's 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 robust. And of course it's front wheel drive because all two CVs work. With rack and pinion steering. If you watched my Morris electric van feature, which went viral, it seemed, I'll put a link above my head for that if you haven't seen it. Another, another case in point of a commercial vehicle that's deeply retrospective, and you pay the premium for that kind of retro appeal, but with modern electric drivetrain. So will suit you, Les, low emission zones, congestion, where things need to be delivered but of course this van back here this glass fiber back is perfect as an advertising ad board you know wh whatever your brand is if you want to get it color coded it is old school you get the, the slight whine of the transmission get a bit of wind noise those lovely headlights on stalks these ridiculous wing mirrors on long stalks the corrugated sides okay windy body roll <laughs> the body roll the body roll is just so massive it is absolutely massive but you know it's not going to fall over because they just hang on with that amazing that amazing independent suspension that it has i mean a lot of 2cvs still get used as daily driving vehicles in in hotter countries typically and the nemesis of the 2CV has really always been rust. But when you buy one that's brand new, that's got you know, galvanised chassis, glass fibre back, brand new body shell, you're eliminating so many of the 2CV issues. I typically do 50% new car reviews on electric vehicles on the Late Break Show. 
So I'll put the playlist for my EVs up on the screen somewhere now. You can have a browse. That's brand new kind of sensible practical cars and slightly quirky brand new electric stuff like this. Apparently a very, very famous person in the film industry, who I must not name, has not only got one of these on order, but he's also got three electric Maharis, which are like the, the Citroen, the equivalent of Citroen's Mini Moke or Beach Buggy. And he's got them in his French residence, but he cannot be named, sadly. It's quite a heartthrob for many. You're probably thinking, how fast is this, Johnny? What's the top end on the old, on the old EV? Well, it's 60. I'm doing 40 now. I've got my foot flat on the throttle. I'm in third. So it, it, it doesn't have a great deal of torque. But at the same time, it feels appropriate for the car that I'm in. I didn't do French in school, so I've got no idea how to say, this is the new, fully electric, brand new Citroen AK van called the EV. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to the Late Break Show. I don't know how to say that in French. I can't speak French. I just let the funky music do the talking. Il s'agit de la toute nouvelle fourgonnette Citroën à cas entièrement électrique appelée Levy. Je suis Johnny Smith, bienvenue au spectacle de freinage tardif. So this is more roomy than the original van. It is, yeah. Well, that is good. And then what else have you got inside? I mean, well, they say this like a 2CV is a technologically packed car. We wanted to keep it. We didn't want to... It's a two. It's a two CV, but electric. Yeah, that, that's that, that's what we wanted. So, you're so not reinventing it style wise. No, we got the the battery gauge. Yeah, there's so how much power you got. Yeah, we got a switch for the electric uh, de windscreen demister. Yeah, um, and there's two lights here for um, a warning a if the door is open. Yeah, the and the other one is to tell you that the power is on. <laughs> so not um, a lot else. No, we got the conventional handbrake. The original gear lever, yeah. what is, I wanted to keep because it's a DNA of the car. That yeah. is so important. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it still has a gearbox. Yeah. And will, it's similar to the previous 2CV, you basically put it in a higher gear and just. Yeah, it. you just leave it in third or fourth. Yeah. Um, first gear is blocked off because it's too low. Uh, this one's got the optional air conditioning, the, uh, the flap on the front. That's not optional. <laughs> no, 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 I'll stand there. No, that's that is, standard. Yeah, don't don't sell yourself short. <laughs> no. So there, there you go. There's, your, there's your, your French peasant AC right there. It's just a big flap. Like if you know a classic Land Rover, it's the same. It's just a big flap at the base of the... And it screen. works well. That's great. And a cup holder for... Crying yeah, and that, now that is an optional extra. That is optional. We have, we, have, we have got cup holders and I tried and tested it all across the States a year ago. So they work, they work well. It does work. And apart from that, that, that is it. That is it. Same, same flip up windows, yeah, same, same basic doors. Yeah. Same sun visors. It, it's a two CV, but electric. And I'm all right in thinking like the car, can you choose the fabric for the seats? Yeah, we, we have got, I think around about 32 types of different fabric you can choose. I love the fabric. You and, get. Yeah, amazing. and also the seats come out. Okay. The same as the original car, you just slide them forward, yeah. take them out, put them on the floor, so when you, on your lunch break, on your picnic, you can yeah. sit in your seats and have uh, something to eat. Brilliant. This is your little trolley that I remember from last time, your demonstrator unit. So this is the same again as the van, right? The original 2CV gearbox, inboard discs, mated to the brushless motor here. Um, control module on top, Yeah. battery pack at the back. Yeah. I had, to, I had to look at this because when I first turned up, I thought this is probably my, one of my two, three favorite color schemes on two CVs. I love this two tone, but this one's- This is the first customer EV conversion. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is we've been still, I haven't finished it yet. And we're still waiting for the paperwork for the DVLA. The car came over from Switzerland wow. and it's gonna now be living in London. Brilliant. So it's been, it's been built for London use. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. The throttle is 
it could do with being a little bit smoother it's a little bit on off um, but I'm sure that's something that you can change this particular car is the first um, the kind of prototype build for the van they've done several cars now but the van version this is the first who's gonna be the first high-end barista to order one with your beard and your waistcoat if you were a guy that is I mean women can wear waistcoats not sure about a beard right let's get some speed off he says putting his foot to the floor and going from 40 to 45 in about 10 seconds lovely countryside around here this isn't really the native environment that the the electric van the EV should be in because this is more really about town cities village life you could just imagine it loaded up to the roof with patisserie related confectionery and French sticks and lovely bottles of French beer and other French stuff onions, champagne edible snails now of course I don't just feature electric cars on this show uh, new electric cars so you could be watching this thinking I like this but I don't like the electric element of it well that's fine for 7,000 quid less you could order it with the 602cc flat twin air-cooled engine that it was born with and enjoy it as a little piston car most people's rationale to spend £40,000 plus VAT on a sort of brand new vintage van that although this one's electric it doesn't really go any faster than the original car does will seem like what's, what's the point what, what's the point at all it's probably lost on most people but what we have here is we have a really niche interesting car that you could use as a rolling advert as well as a lightweight short journey usable commercial vehicle and it does have I think it's got tons of charm to it it's brilliant that you can have something like this with a brand new number plate on it and you can legitimately use it you could use it as a brand extension for me it's just nice to get in something like this and remind myself of how simple and utilitarian vehicles can be yet you have a big smile on your face I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. If you haven't already subscribed, why not subscribe? I do an awful lot of electric car stuff, both quirky and odd like this, and brand new and fairly normal. Uh, have a look at our merch as well. I'll put a link in the description below. We sell merch. You might want some. You might not. It's fine. I'm not offended. <laughs>